everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly. We've got a lot to go through today. It is a whole lot of knitting to share with you all and even some yarn acquisitions that I recently got. So we're just going to dive straight into it today and get started. <laughs> So I don't have any finished objects to share with you all today, but I do have a lot of whips and like I said in the intro, quite a bit of yarn that I recently purchased, actually just today at my local yarn store. So we'll start with the whips and we'll go through all of that and then we'll dive into the acquisitions near the end of the episode. So first things first is I want to talk about a really fun knit along that Unit Toronto is currently holding and it is the Florencia Summer Cow. So Unit approached me and asked me if I wanted to be a part of this summer knit along for the Florencia Tea. I'll be putting pictures up here on the side and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous um, bottom up constructed raglan with some beautiful um, eyelet details to make out little triangles across the whole front and the back of the tee. So thank you so much unit for bringing this to my attention and letting me be a part of the knit along. It is actually a pattern that I've been interested in and admiring for quite some time. So I'm really excited to finally have it on my needles and soon will be done and in my wardrobe. So they very kindly sent me some knitting for olive cotton merino in the color dark ochre. And this is one of my favorite colors. I've knit um, a couple things in this color before and absolutely love it. It's my first time using the cotton merino and I've been wanting to use it for so long and uh, so far I'm in love with it. It's so drapey and beautiful, perfect summer fabric. They also sent along this cute little pouch from, I believe it's Liberty of London. Um, if not, I'll, I'll put the correction up on the screen. But this really cute pouch so I can put double pointed needles and notions and things like that. So thank you so much. And uh, without further ado, I'll show you my top. So here it is. I just got the yarn last week, so I don't have a whole lot done, but like I said, this is a bottom-up construction. So I have the bottom ribbing done, and I have just almost a full chart repeat of the lace detailing here. So the great thing about this knit along is that they're offering a discount code right now. I'll put the code up on the screen and it gives you 50% off of the pattern on Ravelry. So it's F-L-O-R and all of the details will be written down in the description box below as well. So if this is something that you've had queued for a while or a pattern that you've loved on Ravelry, now's a good time to knit it up maybe along with some other people and to get a nice discount and if you want to be included in the possibility of winning a knit along prize you do have to make a Ravelry project page with um, the for the Florencia top so here it is again absolutely loving it here's the front and the back. Again, I don't have a whole lot done. <laughs> Just started last week or a few days ago once getting the yarn, um, but so far really loving it. I'm a bit scared about the bottom up construction for a raglan because that's not something I've done before, but it's always good to step out of your comfort zone when it comes to knitting <laughs> and maybe I'll find that it's not as scary as it seems. Who knows? <laughs> But so far it's been a really enjoyable knit. It is like such an easy lace repeat and easy to memorize, but it is so impactful, I feel. So I'm really happy with how it's coming along. I can't wait to work more of the body up and to see how this uh, rec or not rectangle, <laughs> triangle eyelet pattern looks as more and more of the chart repeats are completed. I am so nervous about the sleeves. <laughs> 
If anyone's done a bottom up raglan, maybe you can let me know if you found it difficult or finicky. It's so daunting to me for some reason, <laughs> but I think it'll be okay. Just like kind of any new technique for knitting for me anyways, I'm always um, hesitant about going into it. And then once you do it, you kind of realize like it was not nearly as difficult as you made it out to be in your head. But it is kind of nice just jumping straight into the body <laughs> with the raglan and not having to do increases right away. So I've been liking that. And this is actually a good TV knit because it's such an easy um, pattern repeat. And it's easy to read your knitting with the triangle um, eyelet so you kind of know when you have to do your yarn overs and all of that. But yeah, this is... <laughs> This is a new one for me for bottom-up construction raglan, but we will see. Yeah, and this is something that I've been admiring for quite some time, so I'm really happy to hopefully have it done in the next couple of weeks and have it for the end of summer. I think it'll be fine for fall um, and winter and all, all year round, and you can just wear a tank top underneath or layer it with pieces but i just love how nice this fabric is from the cotton merino again i've been wanting to use it for so long and i'm very very pleased with it and this color it's just the color of my dreams i think <laughs> so i'll keep you all up to date on this fun project here this is actually my first cal that i've been a part of and it's kind of fun to be in a group knitting with other people um, I guess test knitting is kind of like that. You're all knitting at the same time and seeing each other's progress along the way, but I haven't done anything where it's um, just for fun and not test knitting. And so it's been fun in that regard, even though it's only been a few days for me. <laughs> but it is kind of nice knowing that there are a bunch of people participating in it and making progress on the same project that you're working on. So we'll have one last look at the Florencia and again all the information is down below and there's a link to my project or the Florencia project page in the description box. All right, we'll get on to the next couple of whips here. Now this is one that is quite old. <laughs> If you've been watching for a long time, you may have seen an episode where I brought out a granny square that was about this big, and I didn't have any more yarn left for it, so I didn't know what to do with it. I was contemplating making it into a pillow, perhaps a bag, or even framing it and putting it in the craft room. Then I was on Instagram the other day, and I came across this quick little video clip, and it was a lady who made little pouches out of granny squares to hold passports and different things like that. So I decided to do the exact same thing and turn this bigger granny square into a nice little like folded pouch. So here it is. I just have to weave in the ends and add in a button about around here and it'll close up. So really easy to do. All I had to do is attach the three corners together and then you have yourself a pouch. I did block it once it was done just because this was sort of curving and twisting so I pulled that tight and just got everything in order. Sorry if you can hear the windows open it's very hot in here and there's a big truck driving by. Sorry about that. So let me show you the button that I got for it. I thought it would be hopefully it's the right size. I got this button today I just thought it was a really cute button that kind of fits the granny square aesthetic. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's the button. So I thought it kind of look cute. Just thought it was fun. <laughs> and I am contemplating whether I should just keep it as a pouch or and just like store my iPad in it or something like that. I'm going to pause for a second. 
Okay, I had to shut the window. Sorry about the noise. So yeah, I might just keep it as a pouch, store the iPad in it and have the little button, but I'm also contemplating whether or not I should turn it into a full like crossbody bag and do a lining for the inside so it has some structure and it won't sag or stretch when I'm putting something a little heavier in there, like a wallet, my phone, and then also adding straps. So not too sure yet. I'll add the button, go from there and see, see what we're working with. But just wanted to give this a quick little share on this video to let you all know that this granny square turned into bag slash pouch. <laughs> and here's the back of it. And here's the front. So if you guys have any random granny squares laying around that you don't know what to do with or were going to be a project and then was forgotten about, you could definitely turn them into little pouches, great stocking stuffers for Christmas, great little gifts to have on hand throughout various occasions for the year. <laughs> um, yeah, it's super easy, super quick, and I think they're really cute. My next whip is the Fleur, no, the Felix Cardigan by Amy Christoffers. And this is the one that I am knitting for my friend. And I've just been kind of working a few rows a day. And then before I knew it, we split for body and sleeves and here we are. So it looks pretty tiny right now, but it's rolling in and yeah, it's hard to show. Let me see here. Yeah, this is impossible to show. <laughs> Anyways, here are the raglan increases. Here's the back. And yeah, I'm just chugging along on this. I'm working on the body, so it's just um, knitting and purling back and forth for a little while and it will be a cropped cardigan so she'll be able to wear it with some dresses while still getting some nice shape so it'll probably end near the smallest part of her waist so it probably won't even take me that long to finish the body i did try this on it fits really well we're the same size about and i would say yeah, probably wants it to be here, like right at the smallest part of your waist. So, I don't have that much longer to go, which is really exciting. And then I can get onto the arms and do the button band and all of that. You all know how a cardigan works. But it's really nice. I haven't been putting any pressure on myself with this one. And she actually saw it today in person for the first time and got to feel the fabric. It felt really soft and luxurious to her, which is amazing. She loved how it was turning out. Absolutely loved the eyelet details. And yeah, it's been going really smoothly. And it's actually a really enjoyable knit. It's not um, confusing at all. It doesn't take much of my brain space. I can just kind of pull it out and knit whenever knit in front of the TV, knit on the go, knit at a coffee shop, which is what my friend and I did today. And it's totally easy to knit on this while having a conversation, watching a show, all that stuff. So it's been really enjoyable and I'm hoping to get a lot done in the next couple of weeks. And I am beyond excited to have this ready for her since I promised a jacket over a year ago. <laughs> So I just can't wait to give this to her and I know she's going to absolutely love it. And there's not much to say. I'm just kind of <laughs> on the body right now going knitting back and forth. Um, I didn't get gauge for this one. So I ended up doing, I think I was going to do the small size, but then I did another repeat for the raglan increases because there wasn't enough room in the armpit. Because I am using, yeah, because my gauge is pretty tight most of the time, I did um, go up a needle size also, I think. And it was still pretty tight, so I did have to do an extra round of repeats, or not repeats, of increases. And thankfully, once I split for sleeves and body, it worked out perfectly. It's like right here, so it's not too tight, it's not too loose. 
and I think it'll be like since she will be layering it with a lot of dresses um I think it'll be perfect like there won't it's not too tight that you'll have like fabric gathering there and it's not too loose like it'll be really flattering I think and I am using the um Drops Sky which is a um, baby alpaca and merino wool and it is the colorway eight. So I do love this yarn, it's really soft. It's my first time using it. The only difficult thing is that if I have to take out any rows, which I actually did at the very beginning, I need about this much of it. I had to pull back about two rows and then I ended up just pulling back the entire thing and starting over because it was a nightmare trying to get the stitches back on the needles after pulling back because this yarn, um, if you can see it, it's like chain and it was impossible to get the whole, like the whole needle through the loop. It just kept catching these little um holes in the chain and it was just an absolute nightmare <laughs> i was i just came to the realization that it would be so much easier for me to rip back and start over than it was to like try and get the perfect or you know what i mean to try and get the needle through the loop without catching any of the other like holes in the chain of the yarn yeah anyway <laughs> that's the only downside to this yarn i would say it's just you don't want to have to frog this yarn back, <laughs> but it is like really soft and it makes a beautiful fabric. I am curious to see if it will pill or not and how it will wear, but we'll find out. If any of you have used um, Drop Sky, I would love to know if it held up well throughout uh, the years or the months or whatever. So I'd love to know if you could um, let me know in the comments. There it is. My next whip. I have so many whips going on. <laughs> and some that I'm not sharing because they haven't had much work on them recently. So there's no point. And I just keep wanting to cast on more and more. Ugh, it's kind of it's kind of stressing me out a bit I, I know I need to finish some things but lately my attention span sometimes I can focus on one thing for a really really long time other times I need to to work on it for 10 minutes pick up a different project work on that for 10 minutes pick up a different project and do that like with five different projects I'm in that phase right now Anyways, this next one is one that I haven't shown on the podcast before, and it is just a plain vanilla sock. I am using this yarn here, which is self-striping, and I do not have the band for it. I am so sorry. But it's a beautiful self-striping, and there's tweed in there too. So I'm just doing your basic vanilla. I did 10 rounds of two by two rib, but I actually started with just one round of stockinette, one round all knit stitches at the top and then went into two by two. And I kind of like how that looks, just gives it a nice little like clean look at the top. And I went for a longer cuff than I, leg cuff than I, um, or just leg, I guess, <laughs> leg than I usually do. I usually do like shorties and about to here and i um love the way the stripes are turning out if you can see so we've got beige blue beige a little fine line of pink dark beige and then more fine line pink there i started the slip stitch heel flap and here's more of the pattern coming out i'm almost done that and then i'll start with the um the rest of the heel <laughs> uh these i started not last night, the night before, and it was just kind of um, an impulsive cast on, but I thought that this would be really great to gift to my partner's mother for Christmas. So I think I'm gonna knit these up and just have them stacked away or stashed away somewhere and have them ready to go for Christmas. And I know that it's just gonna take a lot of stress 
away from me knowing that I have a gift for her done already. So um, yeah, I've just kind of been picking these up randomly here and there and before I knew it I was here and they've been flying by. I really like this wool. I can't wait to see how the foot looks with the self-striping. And I really, really, really love the um, tweeds in here too. I think it gives it um, a nice little look. And I think the colors are just like nice and toned down and muted and really beautiful. I think these will be nice and warm socks too. So I hope to get a lot more progress on these throughout the next week as well. So. I should have a lot more of this sock done for the next episode and hopefully you're all excited as I am to see what the next like bit of striping looks like on the foot, but I will show you that. So yeah, I'm just using the um, Crazy Sock Ladies vanilla sock pattern for that. And speaking of socks, I showed you my gingham socks that I kind of uh, self-drafted, I guess not really. I just kind of like threw in the color work in there and I'll put up a picture here. I'll show you how far I got. And I was mentioning earlier that they were really tight because of, this was my first time doing color work socks and I was trying to be as loose as I could. And I was saying my arch is really high, so it was super difficult to get it on my foot. And I could get it on my foot, but it was like such a fight and it was not enjoyable to get on my foot. So I ended up ripping back and I did hear from some of you in the comments from last episode. So thank you so much and saying that blocking probably won't help much with the stretch of that and to go up a needle size or, or a sock size. So I ended up ripping them all out and I will start those again soon, but I just need a little break from them. So they're all back here. These are, whoop. <laughs> these are the yarns that I used. They're back in their balls and I did get a larger needle size and I'm going to try that again and hopefully it works out because I really did love the socks. I thought they were adorable. I loved, loved, loved the colors together too. And I was actually holding those socks in a cute little project bag that I made the other day. And I'm really excited to show you all. So I had some fabric that I dyed with flowers and tea. So it was fabric that I treated already and it was ready for dye. So I had this like tea color based and then I grabbed some flowers from my mom's flower farm and I did the hammering of flowers onto the fabric and then I turned that fabric and I'll show you the whole fabric that I did and I cut some pieces out and I'm going to be able to get three bags out of them I think and anyways I'll show you the one bag I made the other bags have been cut and ready to go I just need to sew them here it is. I put my mom's flower farm logo on there. These are marigolds. I did, I hammered them petal by petal. So instead of just placing the whole flower on the fabric, I did each petal and I just sort of arranged them in a flower uh, design. And then yeah, all of this is like a tea slash flower dye. I this is self-drafted, it's not, I didn't use a pattern, I just kind of um, went for it and it was my first time doing a zipper and a, a bag, I guess. And it turned out okay, it could be better for sure, but I'll be getting practice, I really enjoyed making it. And I just lined it with some nice cotton. I made a shirt out of this, so it might look familiar. But yeah, it's lined with this and I just think it's so, so cute. It's the perfect uh, sock project bag. And I think I'm going to be making a ton more of these with all of the flower dyed fabric that I've been making or dyeing. It's such a great way to use it up. They're so fun to make and yeah, it's cute. They make, it makes me so happy to pull this project bag out and and knit on things. I love 
love, love the flowers on here. So the flower hammering is really cool because you just hammer it in and then you peel the petal off and this is what's left. And you can see like there's quite some detail in there. I think, yeah, I just love it. I would love to have a top with this fabric. How cute would that be? Hmm. I'll be doing that. <laughs> Okay, my next whip is um, the Petite Souffle by Laura Penrose. And this is one that I'm making for my niece. It's going to be a striped version without the ruffle on the yoke. And this is what I have so far. So, here we go. I've just done two sets of stripes. This is a little like keyhole opening at the back and I believe it's an applied eye cord for the finishing at the neckline. My niece is one and a half and I'm doing sizes three to four just because I plan to give this to her at Christmas and I figured it'd still be really cute oversized and baggy on her and and she can wear it with like leggings and stuff and that would be adorable and then she can wear it for a couple years hopefully and so she can wear it when she's two, three, four. I'm hoping that's the case, but again, kids grow so fast and you just never know. But <laughs> this is what we have so far. I'm just about to split um, for uh, sleeves. And I will soon be adding in the next color for the stripes, which will be this Sirdar Snuggly DK in the color Tawny. I think it looks really pretty. And then the next set of stripes will be in the Sanus Garden Duo in the Dark Powder Rose. Ooh, there we go. And this is what the, all the colors look like together. So with this one, I think I'm going to do maybe three quarter length sleeve three quarter length kind of like balloony, not balloony, but kind of <laughs> sleeve. And again, I kind of am picturing her in it with it being oversized and with a pair of cute leggings. And I think it'll be really cute. And then hopefully she can just grow into it and it'll be a regular shirt too. The only thing is when it's oversized, I do think that this neckline will be quite big so I'm hoping it doesn't like slide off to the side too much I still do have to do the eye cord and I'm not sure how much that'll cinch it in probably not a whole lot but I think this is super cute and I love making things for my niece I love it so so much and this is kind of a project that was inspired by all of my leftover yarns I saw all these colors I thought they were beautiful together and I knew it wasn't probably enough for something for myself. And I thought my niece loves knitwear. So <laughs> this was a good opportunity to start something for her. And I really love the petite souffle or the souffle pattern in general. I'd love to make myself one too. And maybe I'll do that this winter. But it's nice to kind of start it with my nieces. And I've learned that I do like the construction of it so far. It's pretty fun. And then I can make myself one. And when I make mine, I think I will do a ruffle. I kind of like the ruffles that aren't too roughly. that are pretty subtle and have like a little bit of wave and not too much wave. And I like it. I think there's a fingering weight version and then like a DK version, if I remember correctly. And I definitely would want to do the fingering weight version so that's all for knitting whips uh, I am working on another sewing project right now and that is a whole cloth quilt that I'm making for my nephew that will be here in September or October I'll put some pictures up of just kind of the fabric and like I've got very little done <laughs> But yeah, it is a whole cloth quilt and I've not done that before, but I basically just bought two 
full pieces of fabric and um, some cotton batting for in between. Laid them on the ground flat, <laughs> pinned them all together, like all throughout the whole square or rectangle. And then I drew my lines for the quilting sewing part. <laughs> you can tell I'm not a quilter. And then I just started sewing them yesterday. So I'm doing, it's a window pane fabric on one side and I, the window pane's going this way. I'm doing the sewn lines, sewn quilt, line, quilt lines <laughs> diagonal and then another diagonal. So there will, if this is making any sense, it'll be a grid, but it's like 45 degree grid to the um, window pane grid that's on the fabric. <laughs> And then um, there will be, uh, so far it's turning out. Again, I've, I'm not a quilter. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of winging it and it's looking good so far. I'm proud of it. I think it's gonna be a really nice little like throw quilt blanket to go over on the edge of his crib and he can hopefully have this blanket for his whole life. And I think it'll be a nice blanket that like is really, um, breathable because it's like all natural cotton batting and then cotton for both layers on the outside and the front, the back and the front of the quilt. The binding for the edge is another like smaller black grid pattern that I think will go really nicely. I explained all of that terribly so <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but that is one thing I'm working on for the sewing projects and then also some more of these bags once I'm done the quilt I plan on doing and then hopefully after that after I'm done the quilt and some project bags hopefully I will make some more um, zero waste clothing oh yeah <laughs> final part of this episode is the the acquisitions so I recently ordered online some sock yarn from Hedgehog Fibers and this is the color Cereal because this is my dream yarn. It is yarn that I've wanted for so so long and I've had just in my open tab uh, on my phone for so long and I found a place in Canada that uh, sells it and I was able to get it. So I just got it. <laughs> and there we go. It is the most beautiful speckled yarn I've ever seen. It's really delicate. Just got little pops of color here and there. And I plan to make a hat. I forget the pattern name, but I'll put it up here and it'll be linked down below too. And I plan to make a hat out of this. I think it'll be a perfect hat. It's just got, like I said, that subtle color in there. It's not, there we go. I am just a sucker for some lightly speckled yarn. I think it's so, so pretty. So got that, and Hedgehog Fibers for me is kind of like my, one of my favorite yarn dyers. I just love to go on her website and check out all of the different colors. They're so inspiring and they make me wanna play with color a lot. So then the rest of my acquisitions are from today. I went to um, Stash Lounge in Inglewood here in Calgary. And if you're in the area and haven't been to Stash yet, it is the best yarn store. <laughs> I love it there so, so much. It is just so fun to go in there and browse and everyone's really nice and helpful there. So I wanted to get some undyed yarn so I could dye it <laughs> with some more flowers and I'm still debating what kind of dye I want to do. If I want to do a speckled or like a full tonal or something. I'm thinking I want to do a light speckle. Like if I could achieve some very light speckles like this with some dried flower powder, I would love to. So I just got this gathering yarn. It is Merino 6 ply sock, 85 Merino, 85% superwash Merino, 15% nylon, and it is a DK. 
So I thought it would be fun to dye these up. Do some DK socks because they go up, knit up so, so fast. And gift that to my mom for Christmas because it would be nice for her to have some socks that were dyed with her flowers and knit by her daughter, I think. Knit and dyed by her daughter. So I've dyed this um, gathering yarns before and it turned out really nice. This feels really, really nice and I'm very excited to dye some of that. My next bit that I got is for a color work hat that I want to do. And I did a little color work chart design last week. I did two actually. I'm still debating which one I want to knit up, but I'm doing my own design for a hat. So nothing's written down. Well, the chart is on my phone. The color work chart is on my phone. I think I'm going to be doing a folded one by one rib and then the rest will be stockinette and the color work will be in the body of the hat. I guess the head part, not, you know what I mean? So I got this Explorer Knits, which I've not knit with before. I'm very excited to, because I've always wanted to. And this is the color um, Desert Bloom. This is Rocky DK base. It's 100% Superwash Merino. And just very very beautiful soft pink purples and blues in there so i want this to be the brim part of the hat so that will be double folded and the color work will be in this as well and then the rest of the hat that'll just be like from the crown of the hat i guess is life in the long grass and it is a dk twist in the color grit and it's this and I thought it would look nice because it's got very subtle speckles of like soft purples and blues which are present in this and uh, I really like life in the long grass I've knit with her stuff before I saw these two together thought they look really pretty and the color work that I did is like flower related, so I thought that this color would be appropriate. And this main color here, it's nice because it's like beigey and soft with like, yeah, if you can see the bits of purple in there, I thought it would just kind of give it a nice, I thought it was a nice pairing. They were kind of close to each other on the shelf and I immediately was drawn to that. That's not at all what I was thinking when I was designing this hat in my mind. I had a completely different color palette in my head, which was more like this color paired with like a, a, a darker blue is kind of what I was thinking, or perhaps even um, a purpley or a purple, um, a purple and like a, orangey it's like a soft orange <laughs> so not at all what I had in mind but this kind of just stood out to me and I thought go for it try it out and I'm really really excited to start that I want to start it tonight to be honest I'm very excited to kind of try out my own color work design and what I have pictured in my head I think is really beautiful so hopefully I can translate that to a real life hat yeah, um, I will keep you all up to date on that hat and we'll go from there. My final bit of acquisition, acquisitions, is the, um, it's Patagonia Organic Merino from the Juniper Moon Farms. And I plan to use this for the tulip sweater by Melody Hoffman. So this was an item that was listed on my 2023 knitting plans video and one that I haven't started yet. And I thought falls around the corner. I'm going on a camping trip for my birthday in fall and I would love to have this done by then, which is October 1st. So a little over a month. I hope I can do it. It is, I think a DK weight, let's see. No, maybe more of a sport weight. 
yeah I think it's a sport weight so I don't know <laughs> we'll, we'll see but anyways here's the color again there's a there's a trend here <laughs> but I can't help it I like this color and I don't even know if it looks good on me but it doesn't matter to me because I just really love this color and I yeah it's a perfect fall color also so this is um yeah <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that oh this is color acorn juniper moon patagonia color acorn and I think I'll look really pretty in the uh, tulip sweater it's tough because the tulip sweater calls for the new to din yarn or like an unspun yarn and I just didn't have access to that I didn't want to order yarn and yeah so I was just I kind of looked at the other projects that people have done in the past and saw that a lot of people used just other yarns that wasn't like unspun or wasn't new to din and it seemed okay and it was fine so I'm gonna try try it out with this and see how it goes. I want to do maybe a three quarter length sleeve. I haven't decided. I'll either do full length or three quarter length. And if I do three quarter length, I might kind of not do a full bell like this, but just kind of keep it straight. And um, I want to do a kind of a cropped version so I can wear it possibly with dresses and high-waisted skirts in the winter with leggings and then also wear with high-waisted pants but so it's long enough so my belly button isn't showing so very excited that I actually have the yarn for this project and I want to cast this on tonight so badly but again as you saw I've got a lot going on for whips and I should I should kind of just tone it down a bit or else I'll have way too many things on the go and might not get anything done <sighs> oh my okay I think that's it I think that's everything oh I did buy some more buttons uh, I have buttons to put on the anchor jacket that I knit for my nephew and I got a little handmade tag to put in the back and I got four little buttons they're all different too one little teddy bear one and then little like buck with his antlers okay that's all my acquisitions <laughs> uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me today I hope you enjoyed it I hope you uh, we're able to work on your project or just relax and have some downtime with me and I hope you're all having some happy knitting and happy making it's crazy that it's almost the end of August and that September's around the corner I know a lot of people are starting to think about their fall knitting plans and I know just this kind of last week it started to be on my radar I am excited to Kind of get on to other projects too. A lot of the summer projects were fingering way and it's nice to kind of get to some some um, you know thicker needles <laughs> and quicker projects. Uh, yeah I would love to know what you're working on and if you've already thought about what you want to make for fall or if you have already started your fall knitting projects. Again, thank you so much for hanging out and being here. If you liked it, please consider liking, subscribing, and or commenting because it helps the video, video out a lot. And I also appreciate it so, so much. And I love reading all of your comments as well. I hope to have a video in the next week or two. We will see. And I'll give you all updates on um, the Florencia cowl, especially, and some of these other whips that I have piled up here. Uh, until then, I hope you all have some great knitting time, and we'll talk to you all later.